Well, hi again, folks, for another Matchbox uh, restoration. This is a Matchbox Ford Escort Cabriolet from the 80s. We do like 80s cars. And uh, this one was made in Macaque, believe it or not. Roll the title. Right, well, as you can see here, it's very play-worn. It's uh, seen better days, obviously, but it's all there. It's not damaged in any way by what I can see. And uh, the windscreen, as you can probably see there, looks to be in pretty good condition. And uh, it looks to be an early model. It's got the square of front on it. When they come out, these uh, they had a square of front on them. The first one was the XR3, which was a carbureted version. This one was the XR3i, which they took the carb off and put fuel injection on. And also the Cabriolet obviously had the roof off. We didn't get many of these over here or see many in the UK, but uh, still a very nice car. They tended to be priced higher over here in the UK for a Cabriolet version if you did want one. I never did want one, I preferred the other one. So uh, let's have a little closer look at it and uh, strip this little baby down and see what we got. Well, all around it, this is a white one. And uh, I personally didn't like the white one. I don't like white cars, to be honest with you. So we're going to be changing the colour of this one to the one that I wanted back in the day, which was either black or graphite grey. Red was a common colour. Again, I didn't really like the red ones. They tended to fade in the sunlight, and uh, a red, lot of red cars suffer from that. As I say, this one's made in macaque. And uh, as you can see, there has the square of front on it. The later, I think it went up to a Mark IV or a Mark V even, I'm not too sure. But uh, they didn't change too much, apart from uh, interior and uh, obviously the front wings to change shape a little bit. But this little bit at the top there, as you can see, always breaks off on these Cabriolets when you see these little models. But this one's intact. The interior's all there, it's pretty detailed. I may even paint that a little bit as well, so look out for that. Right, so... What we're going to need to do, obviously, is drill this rivet out at the front here. And it's only got the... No, it's got two rivets on this, but uh, as you can see there, I've got a lovely sharp drill. And I'm able to just go nice and slowly, and it really chews them rivets out, as you can see. Does a fantastic job. Just spin it round and uh, do the back one. Now, as you probably know, I prefer to put uh, mock rivets. These ain't rivets, these are posts, by the way. They're actually bent over in the factory, but we have to replace them with something. So. A lot of people use a screw. I prefer to use the uh, blind rivets, which I super glue in, as you'll see later on. And uh, hopefully we can just pop this off, yep. Comes off nicely. Don't want to pry too hard here. I never like to damage these cars, but uh, the front one obviously needs a, a little bit more, I think you'll find. Yeah, see I'm straining with it there. So I think this one will need a little bit more drilling, as you can probably see there. I don't like to pry these too hard because uh, I don't like to do any damage. So again, look look how much, just a little bit, look. And hopefully that will be enough just to pop that off. There we go, look at that, fantastic. So never drill too deep. And if we look here, the wheels are held in by just one bent spring, which is uh, nice and easy to, to get these wheels out. And the wheels are actually in good condition. They got this black insert here as well because that's the uh, rear bar there as you can see and the cowling at the back for the uh, cabriolet hood. So the interior bar always breaks off as you can see, that bar there. And people do make them or some people leave them off but um, we're lucky. So yeah, the interior, although it's pretty tidy, it's quite detailed as well, I may give this a paint. It was grey initially and I may put inserts, I don't know yet, I'm not too sure. But everything's there, it's quite well detailed. We'll have to wait and see a little bit later on. The uh, windshield is held in by these two rivet posts. Again, got to be very careful with these, and you'll see the benefit of a sharp drill. Look how slow I'm going there to get them little posts off sort of thing. And again, you don't want to drill too deep here. You don't want to go through the bonnet, so just take your time. And don't forget, this glass is very fragile. So look, just a little, little ping and out it comes. As you can see, this one uh, has the headlamps actually incorporated into it as well. Looks a little bit yellow, we'll give it a clean up anyway, and uh, hopefully we can get this back to looking pristine again. So inside and outside, all there, nice and tidy, no dents, no broken bits off. Uh, the wheels, as you can see, just take them off very easily. They'll just need a basic clean up. 
and as you can see I'll just put some more chrome paint on them and just give them a little clean up so first of all I like to drill these posts out and as I said to you before a good sharp drill does make a hell of a difference here I've bought some cheap drills which are absolutely useless so spend the money get a decent drill you won't have to push hard and as you can see these are the little rivets I'm choosing on this one they're slightly different than the other ones I use and as you can see I didn't quite drill deep enough on that although it probably do the job I'm just going down a little bit further there's plenty of post length there so I decided just to go a little bit further and as you can see these little rivets when they go in flush absolutely lovely and as I say that will super glue in a treat that will just quickly do the back one and there we go exactly the same up to the hilt happy days right so let's get this paint off I'm gonna paint the underneath black on this one I think uh, as I say the, the body yet I'm not too sure on the color yet we'll have to wing it but uh, if I do the body work black on this I may do the underside silver so we'll play it by ear as I say so this is my paint stripper I use power strip and one thing I did notice if it doesn't seem to do very well but it does it actually this stuff when you put it under the hot water in the soapy water it really just activates it even more and uh, pulls it off so as you can see this is uh, after paint stripping it's a very it's very tarnished under the paint but uh, as you know this is zinc plated and it could come up a lot brighter than that so what we'll do is give it a go on the wire wheel now I've tended to use them little ones them little ones for the Dremel and they sort of spit out their little bristles everywhere so I'm looking for a decent supply for them I've just got them cheap from the Far East and they're very cheap and they're no good whatsoever so up until then I've been using my large 8 inch wire wheel as you can see here now although it looks a big wheel it is very soft it's going a lot fast and also if you push hard you're gonna wear things through and I think I did that on the mini some of the words were a bit blurred underneath so I'm only doing this very lightly and as you can see there provided you don't push too hard it's going to do a nice job at bringing that uh, surface up to a lovely shine so I'll just go through the whole car there as you can see just making sure again not to push too hard we don't want to lose any of that detail especially when it comes to the underneath and I'll finish off with a bit of wire wool just to smooth things off and uh, this is the final stage obviously before painting although I will give it a wipe with some panel wipe but as you can see that bottom come up absolutely lovely as well a shame we've got a paint over it I don't really need to but um, we'll have a look when I decide what colour we're going to do it I want to put some graphics on here as well I've had a look online for some graphics so uh, we're not going to be too bold and garish but uh, I think it's about time we've got some primer on it well here we go I'm using the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in white. That's the only colour I've got. I'm going to get the grey one. They do a grey one as well. I think they do a black one as well, but uh, this does a lovely job. And again, providing you've cleaned everything all right, you should have no problems with anything bubbling up or any contamination, as you can see there. Lovely finish. Lays down lovely, this stuff. And I will prime the base because I will do it either silver or black, I'm not sure yet. Could have left it as it was, but that's what I've chose. I'm going, I'm going with the flow. Well, I knew I said I weren't gonna choose red, but um, I'm choosing this X7 red from the Tamiya range. My son did have a red XR3i, oh sorry, that was an RS Turbo, so that's the reason why I have chose red in the end. So I'm just mixing up my average 20 or so drops there and I use the X20A thinners there, and then again in equal measures. And uh, let's get some color on the car. But before I do that, I do like to have a little spray test first of all, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm happy that everything's coming out all right, so we now proceed to give the first light coat of red to the uh, primed surface of the main body of the car. I'll just let that tack off for about 10 minutes and then of course I'm going to hit it with another two more coats. You're seeing the final coat going on here. And one thing I do like to achieve is a lovely glossy off the gun finish. 
and uh, I think you'll see that uh, I think we've got that. There you go, just in focus now. Looks absolutely fantastic. I think two extra coats is just enough top on top of a flat first coat, and uh, that's what I always try to go for, so we don't lose any detail uh, in the small carvings that are in the actual body of the car. The underneath, I have decided to do black. Again, this is the Tamiya X1, I think it is. And uh, don't need so much of this, although I do mix it with a one-to-one -one ratio again with the X20A thinner. And as you know, I did prime the base, so this black, very good covering this black, so I did give this two coats. Again, the first coat you're gonna see there is a tack coat. And as you can see there, we've got a lovely black finish. Very, very dark. And uh, one thing I always do with my models is actually apply a lacquer. I use the Mr. Color lacquer again with the Mr. Color leveling thinner on again a one to one ratio. And uh, what we'll be doing is spraying over the red. I like to protect the enamel, not the enamel, sorry, the acrylics, the solvent acrylics, these are. Uh, as I say, they, are, they could be prone to chipping, and this just gives it a lovely durable surface, and also enhances the gloss as well, if you haven't managed to get a good glossy finish on the bodywork, which I already have anyway. So this is about 20 minutes after we put the red on, so it's still tacky as such. And again, I'll put two coats of that, and I'm sure you can see there that uh, it's a lovely smooth finish. No, no orange pill, I don't think. And no need for me to buff this up. I don't try and buff these up and also I decided not to uh, lacquer the under uh, tray of the car I just left it in its solvent acrylic black there we go then let's put everything back together as you can see I've painted the interior uh, I've gone with the red as you know and I'm not going to put any decals on this because uh, I think it looks better plain to be honest with you I've lacquered the actual glass that's going in now as you can see and uh, that's come up pretty good Headlights are staying clear as well. The black plastic insert, all that needed was a clean, and I'm sure you can see that really sets off against the uh, red, the black goes very well with it. The interior, as you can see, is a uh, color match now to the seats with a red stripe down the middle. And let's just clip these wheels back in. Nice, simple, straightforward job, this. The wheels, I did actually cover with a little bit of chrome paint on the hubcaps just to finish them off. Just straighten that spring up, and as you can see, the base looks absolutely lovely. No need to lacquer that whatsoever. So all I do is I had a bit of uh, strong super glue to the post, as you can see there. And on this one, I chose the, these very small rivets and just pop them in place like that. Spread the super glue around it just to make a good seal and you'll find that that won't come out. You can always drill them out again if you needed to in the future, but I just think they look a lot more authentic doing it this way, as opposed to the screws, which a lot of people use. Nothing wrong with the screws whatsoever. It's just a preference thing at the end of the day. I think they look more authentic with a rivet post in there. There we go. Just make sure the glue spread all the way around the joint and that dries clear, as you know. And that's the base, looking very, very nice. If you lacquer them, they can look a bit too glossy, so I just left that in the uh, acrylic paint the, from, from the air gun, or the spray gun, rather. So let's have a look at what it used to look like. As you remember, very, very tatty. It was white originally, with the grey interior there. Very play-worn, and I think you'll agree that uh, it looks a lot better with the uh, black and red compared to the grey interior. Again, don't forget, I did lacquer this car. I was going to put some details on this, but um, I opted not to in the end, and uh, I didn't put any graphics on. I think it looks a lot better without the graphics. It can look a bit too gaudy if you put too many things on these very small cars, but uh, no, I'm very, very pleased with it. It's the first time I've actually painted an interior. I actually spray painted the uh, whole interior black. I left the def dashboard in the original beige color because a lot of these dashboards were gray if I remember rightly, but uh, just to add a bit of contrast there. 
And yeah, I'm very happy with it. Hope you've enjoyed this custom restoration to this XR3i Cabriolet and see you in the next video. Bye for now.